Okay, so here's example seven with integration by substitution. Uh, this one's a little bit trickier than some of the other ones because we have to do something a, a little bit different here. Um, but it's really not too bad. We can still kind of follow that same general uh, pattern that we've been following, um, which is, you know, look for a function and a constant multiple of its derivative. And, you know, when we do that here, um, if we look for functions and their derivatives, uh, you know, we have an x and then inside of that a square root of x minus 3. So, um, you know, if you look for a function as derivative, you can say, okay, maybe, well, here's x minus 3. The derivative of that would be just uh, 1. So the differential du, if we say u equals x minus 3, uh, then du would just be uh, dx, right? And that's great. That's what we have right here. But then we still have this x to worry about. So uh, this would become the square root of u. Okay, dx is just exactly du. But then we still have this x to worry about. Okay, so you might think, okay, well maybe that's not the right u to pick. Um, but then you'll try that other thing that we talked about, which is, well, um, if you can't see a function in a constant multiple of its derivative, uh, then try to let u be the inside guy. And what's the inside guy? Well, here, here's just an x floating around out here. Here's a square root, and inside of that is x minus 3. So the inside guy is x minus 3. So really, that kind of tells you maybe u should be x minus 3. Okay? So, uh, and actually, it should in this case. Uh, but we still have this uh, extra x to worry about. Okay? So what are we going to do with that? Well, if u is x minus 3, then that uh, implies that, uh, so if we add 3 to both sides, just add 3 to both sides of this, then that means that u plus 3 equals x, right? So if u is x minus 3, just add 3 to both sides of that equation, and then u plus 3 equals x. So now this, uh, we can make this substitution in here, and we can rewrite x as u plus 3, okay? So then uh, the integral becomes... Uh, x becomes u plus 3, and then um, square root of x minus 3 just becomes square root of u, and then dx is just du from here. Okay, so uh, be very careful. We absolutely do need these parentheses because this uh, x, okay, this x times square root of x minus 3, that's really kind of like this, but of course we would never write that like this because it's just x, but now x is being replaced by the u plus 3. Okay, so if we um, don't have these parentheses here, uh, then what we're really saying is just uh, u plus 3 times the square root of u, which is completely different. So this is wrong, but this is how we should be writing it. Okay? Because again, we do have these sort of uh, implied parentheses up here, uh, and they carry down to these parentheses over here. Okay, so um, how does this help us? Well, this is good because now we can actually distribute, right? So here, we can, uh, cannot distribute the x underneath the square root. Okay? We can't do that. Cannot. Uh, we cannot do that. So you, you can't push inside of the square root like that. Uh, but we can distribute here into these parentheses, and then we'll have uh, two separate terms uh, that we can work with here. So that's going to be, uh, well, first let's write everything is, uh, with fractional exponents. So this is going to be u plus 3, and then uh, u to the 1 half du. Okay, so we're integrating that. Um, and then let's distribute this now. So this is going to be the integral of, uh, so u times u to the 1 half. So u to, this is like u to the first power which is uh, 2 halves, so u to the 2 halves times u to the 1 half is u to the 3 halves, and then uh, plus 3u to the 1 half, okay, um, and then parentheses, because the du is on everything. All right, so that's what we have here. So this is pretty much just a straight up power rule now, so um, power rule for integrals. So if we integrate that, what's that going to be? Well, remember, add 1 to the exponent and then divide by that. So uh, 3 halves, if you add 1, you get 5 halves. If you divide by that, that's 2 fifths, okay, times u to the 5 halves. And then plus, uh, so we still have the 3 here. And then uh, 1 half, if we add 1 to that, we get uh, 3 halves. Divide by 3 halves, you get 2 thirds, or multiplying by 2 thirds, uh, u to the 3 halves. And then plus c, okay, because it's indefinite, so it has to be, uh, have a plus c. So let's simplify a little bit. So 3 times 2 thirds, those 3's cancel. We just have that 2. Um, also, we have to go back to x. Okay, we have to convert back to x because the original problem was in terms of x and uh, it's indefinite, so we don't have any uh, limits of integration here. So let's come back up here. Um, and then this is going to equal... So what do we have? We had uh, 2 fifths u to the 5 halves plus 2 u to the 3 halves plus c. Okay, so that's going to be... Um, 2 fifths times x minus 3 uh, to the 5 halves uh, plus 2 times x minus 3 
to the three halves, and then plus c is still there. Okay, uh, and that's pretty much it. So that's the final answer there. Um, it's it may be the case that maybe you'll have to simplify algebraically a little more, um, or if you have a problem like this in your textbook, you might notice the answer in the back looks a little bit different uh, from something like this. So uh, the reason is there's some algebraic manipulations we could do here. So let's go ahead and go through that. Um, so this is pretty much it for example seven though. Um, unless if you have to simplify more, we're going to do that now. But I just want to point out real quick what's what was different about this example was uh, this here. We had to do this extra step here where u equals x minus three. Um, and then that tells us that x equals u plus 3, and we had to use this fact to take care of this uh, stray x over here that was just kind of floating around, uh, not really helping us out much. So sometimes that'll work, and you know, the reason that we had to do the substitution here is because um, the x cannot be pushed inside of the square root here, but here, this square root can be pushed inside of the parentheses. So that's what we want to do here, is just get a square root of a, just one thing like that, so that we can push it into some parentheses here, uh, distribute like that. And then we can integrate these using just straight up power rule. Okay. So this by itself can't really do anything. Um, make that substitution. And then basically we're just taking this stuff, rewriting it in terms of u instead of x. Um, and then we can work with this stuff here, whereas this up here we can't because we cannot push the x inside the square root. So, um, you know, kind of tricky just for that reason. But once we get the substitution down and once we remember this part here, uh, just use the fact that u equals x minus 3 means x equals u plus 3. Uh, use that fact to take care of this x here. So that's kind of the tricky part. It's a little bit different. Once we take care of that, uh, the rest isn't too bad, right? Just power rule, switch back to x. Um, don't forget your plus c because it's indefinite. And then we have the uh, extra algebraic simplification that we might need here. So let's go ahead and go through that. So um, basically we have a common factor here we can pull out. So first of all, there's two. Okay, we have a two over five times this plus two times that plus c, so forget about the plus c. We're going to keep writing it, but just, you know, don't worry about factoring anything out, whatever. So um, this is 2 over 5. Before we factor, let's do this. Um, what do we have? x minus 3 to the 5 halves and x minus 3 to the 3 halves. Well, x minus 3 to the 3 halves, we can pull that out of x minus 3 to the 5 halves. So x minus 3 to the 5 halves is the same thing as x minus 3 to the 3 halves times x minus 3 to the 2 halves, right? So x minus 3 to the 3 halves times x minus 3 to the 2 halves is the same thing as x minus 3 to the 5 halves. Because okay? if you have the same base like this, the base is x minus 3. If you have the same base, remember, if you multiply them, you add the exponents. So that's all that's going on there. Um, just some uh, basic algebra there. And then 2 uh, plus 2 times x minus 3 to the 3 halves. And then plus c. Okay, so uh, notice what are the common factors here? So uh, 2 x minus 3 to the 3 halves, and then 2 x minus 3 to the 3 halves. So let's go ahead and uh, pull that out. So if we pull out a 2 times x minus 3 to the 3 halves, um, what's going to be left? So 2 x minus 3 to the 3 halves, what do we have left? x minus 3 to the 2 halves, but what's 2 halves? 2 halves is just 1, so that's just x minus 3 to the first, right? Um, and that's still being divided by this 5, right? So we still have this 5 over here, because we pulled out the 2 the uh, x minus 3 to the 3 halves, so really what we have is 1 fifth times this mess here. So that's really just the same thing as this. Uh, and then what's left over from here? Well, we pulled out the 2 and the x minus 3 to the 3 halves, so all we have left is a 1, okay. and then plus c. Okay. So again, uh, pull out the x minus 3 to the 3 halves and the 2, and what we're left with is this is just, so this 5 on the bottom is like a 1 fifth, and then we still have this x minus 3 to the 2 halves. 2 halves is 1. So this is x minus 3 to the first power, which is where this comes from. And then the 1 fifth, okay, this 5 on the bottom is 1 fifth, that's where this 5 comes from. And then pull this 2 times x minus 3 to the 3 halves out. All that's left from this term is 1. So that's where this 1 comes from. Okay, and then we can simplify a little more. Uh, if we want to get a common denominator here, we can rewrite 1 as 5 over 5. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, and then what we'll have is uh, 2 times uh, x minus 3 to the 3 halves. So what's going to happen here? x minus 3 plus 5 is x plus 2. Okay. And now this dividing by 5, so we can pull out the 1 fifth uh, from here. We can just pull out the 1 fifth and then plus c. But really, this 1 fifth is affecting everything. So just to make it a little neater, we could write something like this. Okay. So then we have uh, just the plus c here. Okay. 
So uh, that's all that's going on there. So you could also write the answer like this. And if you have an example in your textbook like this with the answer in the back, it, the answer might look something a little more like this. Uh, and this is why, this because of this factoring out here. Um, also, I want to point out, you know, we pulled out the x minus 3 to the 3 halves. We could have done that with the u um, at this step over here. We could have pulled out a u to the 3 halves. And that might have been a little easier. Um, but I wanted to save that to the end just to emphasize this point later. And just to show you that, yeah, you know, you still can do that even if it's x minus 3 and not u. Um, but that's really just kind of like a pre-calculus uh, algebra type thing. So, you know, that's uh, often what goes on in calculus is the calculus steps really aren't that bad, right? Like here, the substitution was kind of tricky, but once we got that out of the way, um, the calculus step really wasn't that bad, okay? Just integrating power rule with fractions, you know, uh, a little more complicated than just with uh, integers, but still not too bad, okay? These fractions aren't that bad. And then what was just me uh, the most messy part was definitely the algebra here, okay? So anyway, that's example seven. Uh, with integration by substitution, where this is our answer here, or if you simplify a little more, uh, you'll get an answer like this.